<laughs> it's no use! Actually, before we start this next part, I just need to brief you guys about Sonic Generations. I won't be talking about it because it doesn't really add anything to Tails' timeline. Although having classic Tails around was nice for the story, it didn't really go anywhere in terms of character development, so it just proves to us why Tails was never good and why we all love Big the Cat so much. <laughs> it's no use! Give up! The new Wisp Order. With the release of Sonic Colors also came a sort of soft reboot for modern Sonic. From the implementation of the Wisp to the change in writing, tone, and dialogue to make Sonic less dark in the series as a whole, it's hard not to consider the changes to the Sonic franchise as a whole that came with Sonic Colors as anything other than a reboot of a sort. For Sonic and Tails, this new installment put a highlight on their adventure into Eggman's latest and greatest amusement park, in, in space. space! Because, because why, waste why waste time, time building, building on, on solid, solid ground? ground? Actually, never mind, he, he already did that in uh, Sonic Unleashed. Uh, guess he had to uh, reach for the stars there. But this whole situation almost makes it feel like Colors went back to Sonic's classic roots. Focusing the story around a light-hearted Sonic and Tails adventure while stopping whatever sinister thing Eggman was working on in the background. Now because the game only focused on Sonic and Tails, we got a quick reminder of one big thing after all these years of storybooks, spin-offs, and edgy characters. Which is the fact that this duo is the backbone that the series started on, and to see just Sonic and Tails back together is definitely refreshing, and at the same time it just gives some more solid evidence to the fact that this game's a reboot. So, Tails. Tails in this game seem to be more down to earth, despite the ironic fact the game takes place in space. The questionable changes in the writing and dialogue of colors made Sonic and Tails feel a bit more human with the overabundance of small talk give them brighter personalities. And the game doesn't feel tense because they weren't concerned about Eggman with every breathing moment. It definitely feels more carefree as they took time to relax and absorb their surroundings. Party with the wisp a bit? and prove their superiority to the laws of copyright infringement. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! Now, although Tails didn't really catch any taste of the action in this game, he did re-establish him himself as the second voice after his break from Unleashed, where he gives that good advice so that we don't have to hear Sonic talk to himself the entire game. And since this is Roger Craig Smith's Sonic we're talking about here, he probably would have talked to himself for the entire game. We've definitely flipped the script from Shut Up Tails to Shut Up Sonic. This lack of action or involvement for Tails was due to him spending the majority of the game making a translator for Yakker, the wisp who was trying to tell the duo what happened to him and his planet. Other than that, the only significant thing Tails did was jump in the way of Eggman's mind control beam, which it wouldn't have mattered if he caught Sonic with the beam anyway because Eggman only had a limited supply of energy that lasted uh, upwards to a few seconds. Uh, although, when Sonic tries to tell Tails that Tails was pretty useless because Tails had all the time to go window shopping in Tropical Resort but not enough to actually do anything else, this boy had a pretty sassy clap back. We did it, dude! We? I don't remember you fighting off any insane robots. True. Well, good job to you on inventing a translator that allowed us to speak to the aliens and figure out exactly what we needed to do so we weren't running around the park looking like idiots. <laughs> oh no, wait, that was me. Now, in Sonic Lost World, this sass Tails gathered up in that last moment of colors, last pretty much the entire game of Lost World, and God knows why they called it Lost World when there's almost no adventure or exploration aspect to the game's level design, or to the Wii U's version at least, unless you feel like spending your time exploring for all the red rings, so it should have just been called Sonic and the Deadly Six. Or, you know, and that also would have been pretty wrong because the Deadly Six are nowhere to be deadly, to be honest. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call this one Tails Lost Patience from now on. So in Sonic Colors 2, I mean Lost World, I mean Lost Patience, Tails actually lost his patience, and I can't blame him. 
Years of being nothing but a side character must have gotten to his head, and he definitely suffered through some pain because of Sonic's hasty and aimless actions in Lost World. Oh, excuse me again. I mean Lost Patience. So because of that, he no longer held back some of his more harsher opinions and sassy attitude when he had a chance to let it out. This phase of Tails started when Tails took collateral damage as a result of Sonic not considering the consequences of his actions. When Sonic kicked the conk out of Eggman's hand, he thought nothing of it, but it was ultimately one of the dumbest things Sonic's ever done. <laughs> that was a mistake. Whatever. Which is why it's understandable why Tails got so moody. Tails' moodiness mixed with his cockiness he displayed multiple times throughout the game almost got him injured again because there's this one time he decided to throw all the shade and was being sarcastic at Eggman. <laughs> True, your robots are a reflection of your genius, Dr. Eggman. And thinking he can make Cubot more useful, <laughs> like that's possible, by putting his head on a bat nick and uh, it only ends up blowing up in his face. From not only Eggman saving his, his life in that instance, but mixed that with Tails eventually getting abducted by the Deadly Six and almost being turned into a robot, Tails eventually humbles himself and by the end of the game it feels like he's back to normal. His cockiness turns back into uh, the small bits of confidence that he had, and it's no longer with the spice or sass we had before. So albeit a wild ride, Tails seemed to calm down and go back to normal by the end of the game. I'm not gonna lie, I was ready to rip Tails a new one when going into this game initially, but from the way Tails is written in colors, him acting this way is uh, here is more believable and consistent with the way he acted in the previous title. By this point in the series, some sort of growth for Tails was long overdue, and I think this could be a nice turning point for the character, as long as he doesn't end up this moody again in the future. For some people, the Sonic Boom depiction of Tails seems to be the perfect blend of what Tails should be, but unfortunately, for those people, Boom as a whole is just one big joke to the writers, and they'll never take it anywhere. Funny how it takes the uh, alternate universe to give us uh, tales that we don't have many problems with. For us in the main series, we have to deal with the atrocious version of tales we had in Forces, Whoa, that's harsh. which after his somewhat confusing performance in Colors and Colors 2, was the nail in the coffin for the character to some people. You know how much that bites? We went from Tails lost patience to Tails lost all sense of the fact that he can actually beat Chaos, but he didn't really want to beat Chaos for some reason. And, uh, yeah. So, I close asking you guys this question. Was Tails really misrepresented in Forces, or did Forces just expose a bigger problem that Tails had to begin with? Find out in the next and last installment of this drawn out milk series. The Chronicle of Tales. In your face, Eggman! Think about that. Think about that.